Okay, let's talk about public transport. Will you use public transport more in the future? Well, I, I don't think I'll be using the uh, public commute in the future because it's not convenient for me. I've realized for me to balance up my day and be able to do everything that I need to do for a specific day, mm -hmm. I need to be very mobile. So I use my own car. As a result, I hardly use public transit. So I don't think I'll be using uh, public commute in the future. Okay. And what is the most famous means of transportation in your town? Well, mo mostly people use the metro. The metro is cheaper, it's faster, and uh, it, it gets you to various destinations uh, quite quickly. So most people prefer the metro than the buses or the cars. Others prefer the cars because they can actually take them exactly to the point where they want to go and um, uh, they don't have to meet a lot of people, especially in this uh, COVID environment. But I've realized most people use the metro, especially if they want to get to the city center or to downtown, mm -hmm. they prefer the metro. Okay, uh, do you prefer public transportation or your own car and why? Personally, I prefer using my own car because it's convenient, uh, it's fast for me, and I get to different places um, anytime that I want to go. I don't have to wait for uh, a bus or a metro Asia station. It's all about just getting into the car, dropping off where I want to go, and then I get ba back into the car as well. I'm able to connect uh, various places in a short space of time. Okay, great. Uh, are there any traffic problems in your area? Absolutely. Especially if you travel during the peak hour, then you, you can then regret using your own car because during the rush times, there can be so much congestion. Everyone is trying to get warm some are trying to get to a, a new shift and there's always um, a crisscross of cars and it's quite hectic. When it's peak hour, it can be very hectic and I don't like those hours. So I try and avoid them as much as possible. Okay, now let's talk about shopping. Do you like shopping? Very much, I do enjoy shopping. I'm actually a shopaholic and my husband is always complaining that I tend to spend so much money, especially buying clothes. And I like dressing up my kids. So whenever I get any extra money, I'm always thinking about shopping. So I'm actually trying to avoid that, but it's so difficult. I, I'm not getting uh, bored with shopping at any time soon. So I'm really into shopping. <laughs> Do you compare your prices when you shop? Yes, there's actually uh, so there are actually some mobile apps now that I use when I compare uh, prices. I just log on and uh, punch in the item that I'm, I'm looking for. Then um, the app actually presents the types of shops that, are, that I have that item. Then I actually compare whilst I'm at home such that when I go out, I actually, I just get into the shop where I found it cheaper. I see if it's the actual thing that they advertise, then I get it. I also use the various uh, newspapers and the, the, um, um, uh, the advertising pamphlets that they, they put in post boxes, such that when I realize this thing is cheaper in shoppers, I go to shoppers. If it's cheaper in Walmart, I go into Walmart. Okay. Is it difficult for you to make choices when you shop? Sometimes it is because I usually compare the quality and I compare the prices. 
because I've seen that uh, some shops tend to over advertise and they over market their gadgets or their produce. So basically when I uh, identify a thing that I'm interested in, I try and make it a point to go and see the thing first. Then if I'm convinced, I go in and take it. Mm -hmm. How often do you buy something in a shop? Almost every time. I don't like online shopping. I have a problem with trusting online shopping. So I, I try and desist from that. I want to see the thing. I want to touch it. I want to feel it. If it's clothes, I want to feel the material. I want to get convinced it's the original thing. Then I can be able to purchase it. So I don't like online shopping. I prefer getting it from the shop. Okay, that was the end of part one. Now let's move to part two. Okay. Give me a minute. I have to prepare your question. I think this one is difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Please, no difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worrying about you and now you are complaining that you don't want the most difficult one. <laughs> no, you can go ahead. Give me, I'll crush it. I... <laughs> okay, you have one minute to prepare your notes to speak about and your one minute is now started. Please take your note. Please stop writing, put your pen down. It's up and now, uh, before, one, uh, before starting, please, Mercy Mumu and Sylvia try to take some important notes from this partner. And if she made something uh, wrong in grammar or in a context about something wrong vocabulary, take your notes. And after that, we can take uh, and uh, tell her why, why she made something and why is she, okay? Okay. We can give you feedbacks too. One, one me is not enough. Okay. The, the three can <laughs> give and, uh, you know, there's a need for <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. your two minutes is now started. Please take your note. And now image that there are three examiners in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> Start, please. <laughs> I'm going to talk about um, a music. Sorry, sorry, Jay. I'm forgetting the, the question. Can you uh, oh, put okay. it again? Yeah, sure. Events, okay. <laughs> Okay, it's fine. Okay, so I'm going to talk about a musical event that I attended to. Uh, there are usually um, a, a lot of um, galas that are now being uh, done in my home country. And uh, for this particular question, I'm going to talk about um, 
a show which I attended and it was in, in June of 2017. Um, there were a lot of musicians that had gathered up to present their um, new released albums and I actually wanted to see one of my favorite musicians, Oliver Mtukuzi. He's a music icon and he's well known all over the world. And so I was looking forward to the event and I wanted to actually see him perform. It uh, was, um, it was um, hosted in um, the National Stadium, which is quite a popular place. Most musicians use that uh, platform. And uh, the music was, the event was uh, actually hosted in the evening. It was so beautiful, all the decorations that were there, everyone was excited. And so there I was, uh, I entered the place and I was so happy to see him because eventually I, I entered the place that's when he was about to start. Unfortunately, I realized that he was doing a collaboration with one of the new, the upcoming uh, musicians. So when I heard him started, uh, start singing, I was so disappointed. Their music was not blending. It was like he was trying to teach this youngster uh, to sing and their lyrics were not flowing that well. I used to listen to his music before and I know he, was, he is a good singer. But here, when you did the collaboration with the new guy, Toki, it wasn't good. The lyrics were not flowing. Stop. The lyrics were not meaningful. Stop. And I was so Stop. disappointed. Stop. Stop. Your two minutes is up. <laughs> you tried. You tried. You were right. It wasn't that easy. <laughs> but you killed it. <laughs> you, I, 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 I saw that if I just talk about the, the event on its own, I wasn't going to be able to say much. So I tried to bring in uh, a little bit of these things, you know. <laughs> and I don't know how I did, honestly. You have to give me feedback here. <laughs> and my tenses were now killing me. I was like, I talked about the past tense initially, so I'm not going to talk about the future or present. What am I going to say? <laughs> okay. Okay, calm down. You're in the exam hall. And now <laughs> okay. we are on part three. So let's talk about music. What kinds of music do you like to listen to? Well, personally, I like gospel music. And I like a little like bit of... I like gospel music and a little bit of um, soul, a little bit of uh, rock and roll. I sometimes, I, it depends with the mood I'm in. If with I'm in mood, a very I'm good in. mood. If I'm in a very good mood. Oh, what's happening? I don't know. You can continue. Okay, can, can I start afresh? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Um, I personally like gospel music and a little bit of soul, a little bit of rock and roll. Um, when I'm listening to music, it really usually depends with the mood I'm in. If I'm bored and I'm down, if I'm depressed, I like listening to gospel music. It lifts me up. I feel connected with the spiritual being. I feel motivated. But when I'm happy and I want to get into some dancing groove, I like rock and roll. I like um, the likes of um, uh, Michael Lenz to rock, Westlife. I'm an old school type of person. So when I'm really in the mood of enjoying myself, I go for rock and roll. I go for soul. Okay. Uh, what kinds of music are the most famous one in your country? in Canada? I'll talk about Zimbabwe. Because oh. in Canada, there's a lot of mix. I don't even know what people like. So in my country, Zimbabwe, especially due to the uh, challenges that people are facing now, people have turned to gospel music most of the time. They listen to a lot of gospel because they want to relieve their stresses. They are always in a prayerful mode. 
They just want to find something that can um, at least relieve them and uh, give them hope. So people have realized they're listening, listening to gospel music more. But there's also some traditional music which they listen to, especially the old people. They like uh, old music, like uh, the one I've talked about, Oliver Mtukuzi. He, he likes uh, singing about um, the old times. He tries to educate people. He tries to blend what, what uh, he tries to blend the past and the, the, the present. So old people like listening to that old music. Okay. Is it necessary for the government to require all children to learn music? I don't think the government has to make it a requirement because music has to do with uh, what people prefer. Some people like music, others don't. So it actually depends on what someone wants. If someone likes music, then they should be um, allowed to do whatever they want with music. Because I know nowadays people can un actually earn a living out of singing. So they, can, they should be allowed to do anything. And actually the government should be supporting those upcoming musicians financially, even um, allowing them platforms whereby they can market. But I don't think it should be a regulation or a requirement. People should be left to choose. Okay. <clears throat> uh, there is a saying, music is like a mess. Do you agree? Can you come again? I didn't get that. Uh, there is a saying that music is like masses. Do you agree? M-A-T-H-S. M-A? T H S. Okay. That means difficult. Yes, I believe music is some kind of uh, it's some kind of uh, geometrical form because you don't just get up and start singing. You have to put up a lot of work, a lot of effort. There uh, there are ways uh, there are formulated ways in which you have to 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 work out your music for it to come out nicely. We, when we look at the instruments that are incorporated for you to actually produce a certain type of song, you have to practice it, you have to write it, you, you actually have to be logical even about the lyrics that you are going to so talk about so that it becomes meaningful and it becomes interesting. If you're not going to be organized, then that song won't come out nicely and people will not enjoy it. So it actually re requires a formula for you to make out good music. Okay. Why do many young people spend a lot of money on music concepts? For fun. They like enjoying themselves. They get to socialize. They get together and youngsters actually like going out. So it's a way of relieving their stresses. As a child in these stressful times, you need to relieve yourself. You need to go out and catch some breath, meet new friends, socialize. So kids actually have to go out and enjoy music rather than doing drugs or venturing in, into some uh, criminal activities. If they go out and enjoy music, then that's better for them. Okay. They can actually learn something from those musicians and actually earn a living out of that. Okay. That was the end of part three and end of your IELTS speaking mock test. Good try. Wow. Congratulations, wow. Ma. Yeah. You tried. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> this I realize if I start better. listening to myself, I, I get distracted because I listen, I, I, I tend to hear some mistakes. Yeah, I thus I have added one person in order to make you some things feel, you know, uh, shame and embarrassed among people. When you speak in front of people, in front of public, then the skill that you are uh, not good at will increase dramatically. 
So you have to speak in the public. So I guess uh, you tried. It was better than yeah. yesterday, as the day before. Yeah. Uh, but some points that is important for you. It's a game vocabulary. Uh, on the other hand, it's good your vocabulary, but the, some words are repeating again. You know, you use it peak hours, which is really great, and rush hours, rush times. You use it, which is a good vocabulary and collocation. And the shopping holic, you use it. Wow, that's great. <laughs> it's a topic vocabulary, academic words. You know, uh, and I guess you spoke a lot about music, music, music. There is a song you can use, or uh, is there something? Artwork. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> you know the yeah. word, but you don't want to use it, really. <laughs> yeah, they don't come when you're in the midst of the exam. That, yes. that we are here. We are performing that. In order Afterwards, to... that's when you think of a synonym. Yes. <laughs> when you're actually yeah. talking, they they just fly out oh. like this. Oh yes. Please. When you're Everything. when you're trying to jot down those points, you like you're trying mm -hmm. to look for synonyms. What can what other word can I use for music? Playlists? Uh, hey. uh albums? What can I say? And uh, and another thing is on part one, I think you were a little uh you know lost yourself uh what to talk about you were searching something important uh you know idea is not enough maybe you were searching uh that mm -hmm. the feelings you was impacted by this <laughs> so and other parts really good uh pronunciation i really love uh, you know i really uh adore this pronunciation is clear and understandable for other people even a non-speaker english can understand what you are Seen by your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> really good of you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, speaking, speaking, we, we tend to neglect it for even when we are practicing. We think, ah, yeah. I mm -hmm. can speak English. I can never yeah. fail speaking English. But yeah. then, woo, when you're now mm. practicing like this, you realize, oh, it's not easy. It's not easy. Yeah. Because it's Indeed. academic test, not the, you know, informal yeah. test. Informal yeah. day, day to day, you can talk about with people any topic. There's a problem, but the problem is talking about specific things related to IELTS. Mm -hmm. IELTS something is difficult when it comes to speaking and writing and reading. Listening is something. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so that's it.